the inside, and that's going to be a huge challenge for this Marquette defense. Huge challenge for Selena Lott, the Big East co-defensive player of the year, has a lot to handle here today if they're going to want to have a chance. Ready to get ready and tip it off to start off the 2021 Women's NCAA Championship. Take a look at our starting lineups presented by Capital One for Marquette. We mentioned Selena Lott. This is a starting lineup that has started 26 straight games together. They know each other very well very well first shot of the day off the mark from Azana Baines on the other side for Virginia Tech this is a starting lineup as well that has been together quite a long time and Pitley and Asia Shepard as we mentioned the X factor in this one Brenda is going to be for Georgia Amor the freshman point guard has a, a lot of responsibility on her shoulders and learned the hard way through ACC play how to play the game here in America. Hales from yeah. Australia. Yeah, and the, the light bulb came on in mid-January, and as she has played better, this team has played better, and she's been red hot from three-point range lately. How about the defense to start it off for Marquette immediately double teaming Elizabeth Kitley in the corner? Yeah, we knew that this the job for the Marquette defense is going to be tough. They've got Lauren Van Cloonan inside that will match up with the inside game of Virginia Tech. There's Amor's three at the buzzer off the mark and the rebound there for Marquette and Chloe Morata. And Marquette. They have a rebounding margin each game of eight and a half, and that was a great block out to get things started. You want to establish that kind of rebounding president, presence right from the beginning. And that one's going to fall. First points of the game will go to Marquette and Jordan King, averaging nine a game for the Golden Eagles, hailing from Rockton, Illinois. Down low to Kitley, taking advantage count the bucket and the foul well, you saw a lot all over Shepard outside and they go right away inside set up that presence the nice high low pass to Kitley you try to defend her one-on-one -on -one. it is going to be a tall task inside and we talked to coach Kenny Brooks a couple of days ago and he said I think even in quarantine Kitley's probably <laughs> being double teamed she was being double teamed in her hotel room in San Antonio. The double-double <laughs> machine led the ACC this year with 13 double-doubles. Marquette is going to have to find a way to slow her down at least if they want to have a chance in this one. There's an offensive board and a putback for Cameron Taylor. Again, the rebounding. It's going to be a key in this game. Marquette very strong rebounding, very active offensively there for Taylor. Taylor is that all matchup. Biggies, honorable mention. There's the matchup you were talking about, though, Brenda. Yeah, we saw Taylor earlier on Kitley inside, but that time it was Van Cloonan, and that's going to be an interesting matchup between those two. They have very similar games. Selena Lott kicking it to Cameron. Scrum on the floor for it, and Asia Shepard comes up with it. And just ripped out of the hands of Taylor that time. More good defense this time from Marquette. Take a look at head coach Kenny Brooks, fifth season at Virginia Tech. Now, since his arrival in Blacksburg, Brenda, he has changed the culture of this team. They love to run a high-tempo offense. They love to shoot a lot of threes. Mm -hmm. And his first recruit at Virginia Tech was Asia Shepard. And now you're kind of seeing this team in its full force. There's head coach Megan Duffy having some words with the officials there. She's very, very feisty, likes to get into the action, has a lot of energy. Second season at Marquette. You know, we know her postseason experience at Notre Dame helped the Irish to four straight NCAA tournament burst, but what she has done since taking over mm. for the Golden Eagles is amazing, Brenda. Well, it really is. I mean, she took over a team that had graduated five 1,000-point scorers, and they have just continued at a high level. And, you know, she was so much fun to watch back in her days playing for Notre Dame, and she brings that fire and energy to the sideline as a head coach. 
Here's Taylor driving the paint and the foul. I love how active Taylor has been here early. She gets all over the offensive boards on an earlier play. She is the leading rebounder on this Marquette squad, and she can put the ball on the floor. She is a great complement to Van Clunen inside, and there's Van Clunen getting an offensive rebound. You mentioned that rebounding disparity across the season this year for Marquette. Something that Coach Duffy mentioned they were going to have to do if they want to win this one. Nice save out of bounds there from the freshman Georgia Amor to keep possession. You know, both these teams coming into the NCAA tournament having played number one seeds in their last game in their conference tournament final. So they know what it takes to compete at a high level. And of course, this Virginia Tech team beat NC State in one of their meetings earlier this year. Kaylee was fouled after not only a double team, but a triple team came over <laughs> to guard her. Take a look at the Virginia Tech season summary. They did not start off well, two and seven in the ACC, but things really turned around for them after that huge overtime win over at the time, number two NC State, a one seed in this tournament. And then they went on kind of a streak. They won seven of the last nine games first trip to the big dance since 2006 for the Hokies. You know, and, and Kitty Brooks really talks about the play of freshman point guard Georgia Amor during that time. And we mentioned earlier that things kind of came on for her in the middle of January. And so as she has been successful, the entire team has. You've got that inside outside presence. You have great three point shooting, but you add to that the great point guard play that's made all the difference for Virginia Tech. Shot off the mark. Marquette up by one. About halfway through the first quarter. Goes out of bounds and back Virginia Tech's way. Well, it looked like Kitley got a hand on that. That must have also hit Taylor on the way out. Here's Marquette's season summary. Look back at what they accomplished in the Big East. And you know what's coming for you when you play in the Big East. you got to face UConn in this Marquette team ran into UConn three times including the Big East championship game where coach Duffy said they, they were they did not play well at all they got housed in that Big East championship game but you know for them to win 11 road games in the Big East this year that was tremendous well and and they felt confident going into that game against UConn because they played them tough in the late regular season but as UConn does in March, they turned it up and they owned the first quarter and Marquette got in a hole and it was over. I love that handoff for Amor that that time King with the travel. And there's Coach Duffy all fired up with her team on top by three here in the first. And welcome back. First round of the NCAA Women's Championship. 10 seed Marquette with a three-point lead over Virginia Tech in the first quarter. We talked about it, Brenda. The rebounding margin for Marquette has been crucial for them this season. And today it's showing off. They have a plus five rebounding margin. Yeah, and that, that's just before the first media timeout. Right. They have come out aggressive, gotten on the offensive boards, commanded the defensive boards so far. Good start for Marquette. Selena Lott's first attempt from the field is no good. The leading scorer for this team, averaging 14 and a half points per game. Amor off the bounce, gets bumped, and she'll go to the line to shoot two. Kenny Brooks talks about the fact that Georgia Amor has the keys to the car. They set a lot of high on-ball screens for her, wanted to get her going out of this timeout. Nice use of that pick and driving to the rim. Foul going against Cameron Taylor. All right, keep in mind, all four NIT quarterfinals come to ESPN Networks Thursday, beginning with Mississippi State and Richmond at 6 Eastern on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. 
So we were just talking about the rebounding edge for Marquette. Taylor picks up that second foul. She's the leading rebounder for this team. So we'll keep an eye on how that impacts Marquette's abilities on the board. Taylor Valade checking in as well, the sophomore guard for Marquette. Murata kicks it out. Here's Valade. Got some contact there, but no foul called. And Virginia Tech with a defensive stop. And Marquette looked a little hesitant on that offensive possession. They moved the ball. I thought Selena Lott had an opportunity there from three, gave it up. Got to have that aggressive mindset in the tournament. Quick trigger from Georgia Amor, no good. And the offensive board for Kayla King. And again, Cameron Taylor off the court for Marquette impacts their rebounding. Good hustle play by King for a second opportunity for Virginia Tech. Amor splits a pair. Nice dish off. And the shot no good. It was the right idea. A little behind Greg, though. It took her a little time to have to gather in that pass. Virginia Tech two for nine from the floor so far here in this first quarter. Not shooting it particularly well. That pass, just miscommunication there for the Golden Eagles goes out of bounds. Yeah, good defense by Virginia Tech. A couple of possessions here in a row. Again, Marquette a little hesitant. And when you're you're hesitant, usually because you're not sure if you're really open. You're not sure if you can make that next pass. Virginia Tech getting out in the passing lane, crowding Marquette a little bit. Marquette needs to continue to move the basketball. That's what they're so good at with their offense. That was the fifth turnover for Marquette in this one. Amor leaves her feet, finds Kitley, who puts it up, misses. Goes out of bounds, going to stay with the Hokies here. So they get the touch for Kitley. That time Van Clunen pushes her off the block just a little bit, makes it a little uncomfortable, but you have to think Kitley glad to go against somebody that's not named Halisa Kunane in this game. Absolutely right. Kitley off to a great start. Seven of the nine points for the Hokies coming from Elizabeth Kitley, the sophomore from Summerfield, North Carolina. Hokies with the lead now. Lott driving the baseline, stuffed by Elizabeth Kitley. Kitley so good on the backside of that defense. And Selena Lott, a player Marquette, wants to get going, and Kitley was right there to deny. You know, you saw, Brenda, early in this game, Kitley was getting doubled an awful lot, and she's found a way to kind of wiggle through it and find some open floor. And she's gotten some good looks, although Marquette pushing her away just a little bit. There's a nice pass. Good, better defense. Nice pass, but better defense to not allow that. Just good hustle, good footwork by Baines to knock that one away. Baines transferred from Duke following her freshman year. Here's a nice screen across for Kitley. Good vision. The double came. Wide open player on the backside. Good unselfish pass by Kitley. And that was something Coach Brooks talked about. Kitley has learned now how to play off the double team and find open players around her. Something she was not so comfortable doing her freshman year. At three off the mark, and Georgia Amor pulls down the rebound. Thirty seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Virginia Tech on top by three. Amor step back three, no good. Georgia Amor over two from beyond the arc. Marquette pushing quickly. A pull-up shot from Liza Carlin is off the mark. Five seconds left to go in the first. Amor for three at the buzzer, no good. A couple of misses at the end of the first quarter, but Virginia Tech after one on top by three. We got a lot more to come here from Texas State.
where Kent defenders go to her. Look at the double team. She's so good seeing out of it, but she catches facing up. So she has good vision. And Baines gets an easy basket on the pass out of the double team. And Gilly, so good maneuvering through double teams to score, but also unselfish, delivered a great pass to set up Baines that time. An all ACC first team selection this year is a top five finalist for the Lisa Leslie Award as well. Every time Lott catches the ball, there is somebody right there to make her make a decision with the basketball. I'd like to see Selena Lott be a little more aggressive, put the ball on the floor to create. She is a playmaker, but she's been a little bit hesitant here in the early going for Marquette. Seventh turnover for Marquette so far in this one. Screened across again for Kitley. Better defended that time by Marquette. Here's Kitley, double team, finds the open player on the post who gets fouled. And that's Deja Gray. Cameron, Cameron Taylor still on the bench with those two fouls. That's been a problem. Kitley receives, watch the double team, and see how wide open Greg is. And immediately, Kitley gets her the ball. Players that play around a good post player that consistently gets double team like Kitley does understand that if it's their player, and that time it was Greg's defender, that you dive to the rim and you make yourself a target because Kitley will deliver the basketball. Foul credited to Jordan King, her first personal. Greg one of two at the line. We saw Bean score the pass on that telestrator we did. We scored the ball from the pass from Kitley. Then it was Greg. Kenny Brooks talks about them being the two-headed monster, combining their points. That's the power forward position, that, and they consider their points joint. A nice pass from Salino Lott to Lauren Van Cluden, but just couldn't finish. Marquette having some trouble finding the bottom right now. Now this Marquette team likes to get out in transition. They want to use their defense to create offense, but they haven't quite solved this Kitley situation inside yet. A oh, nice move from Mazana Baines. Again, so much attention around Kitley. She draws the defensive attention. It frees up things for her teammates. Finally gets one to go. That's Van Cloonan. She has that great mid-range game, a really soft touch. She's very active. I think she's going to find a lot more shots in the mid-range than back to the basket against Kitley. Amor from the elbow. Georgia Amor now with a pair of points. Sam, both teams kind of heating up a little bit, starting to figure out what the defense is going to do, finding their opportunities. Offensive board there for Van Cloonan. And Kitley gets her hand in the passing lane. And another turnover. Kitley using that length has a few inches on Van Cloonan inside. Don't want to let Asia Shepard get that wide open shot, but misses there. She's made more three-pointers than anybody in Virginia Tech history. Van Cloonan, a long mid-range shot there, and she's heating up a little bit. Again, that face-up game. Instead of going and putting her back to the basket and trying to score over 6-5 Kitley, getting the ball in transition in that 15 to 17 17 foot range tough shot there for Shepard guarded closely numbers for Marquette here all the attention inside and that opens up driving lanes a nice look that time by Baines little head and shoulder fake to start just carved her way through the defensive players for that score Bain's going to get a breather on the bench now. Stolen away. And then stolen right back. And so Transition finally, defense for De Deja Green. Yeah, and finally... Sam, we see Selena Lott, the co-defensive player of the year in the Big East, get out on the ball and get some pressure and get a steal, but then she turns it right back over. 
Ayla King lost it, regains possession. Shepard down low. Kitley double team manages to get a shot up and somehow forces it in. Kitley with nine points now. And that backside player on the block got covered up. It was better defense by Marquette, but Kitley just finds her way through two defenders. So strong, so active with her feet. Now Coach Brooks was so happy when she signed Van Clunen. Same distance, different spot of the floor. Yeah, they're going to pull out Kitley as much as possible. We'll see how that opens things up for Marquette. Because Van Clunen, if if she sees Kitley come out, has that ability to put the ball on the floor, or it opens up the lane for her teammates a little bit more. The ball movement here by the Hokies. Shepard in the corner. Better defense by Marquette, covering up the open players. Three from Greg off the back iron. Good, good ball movement by Virginia Tech, but I think Marquette adjusting a little bit better right now. Oh, uh, Van Clunen is mm. feeling it right now, Brenda. She's got eight points, four for yeah. seven from the floor. I think she's made her last four in a row, and she is a leader. You can say, let's go. She is getting fired up, able to find the opening in that Virginia Tech defense. Down by two. King loses it for a second. Here's a three from Green, knocks it down. Deja Green, the senior from Ellenwood, Georgia. And that's only her fourth three-pointer of the year. There's a lot of three-point shooters on this team, but she doesn't make as many as most. They've got three players, Virginia Tech, that have hit over 50 three-pointers this year. There's King with the two. Jordan King with four points, two assists in this one. Back and forth we go, Brenda. We had an idea this was going to be a close one. Shepard fading away from the free throw line. No good. And Van Clunen with the board. Megan Duffy calling out the play to her sophomore point guard. It started every game she has played, Jordan King. Shot. The pass goes awry and out of bounds. Well, the Hokies and Kitley have been dicing up the Marquette defense early. Kitley, all ESPN Network, Sweet 16, March 27th, 28th, and then the Elite Eight, March 29th and 30th, Final Four, going to get going on April 2nd, championship game April 4th. Run it, run it, run it. Well, just getting things started, it's going to be fun to watch all the teams in the same area of the country here around San Antonio. And we're in that Riverwalk region with UConn, the number one seed, number two seed, Baylor. There's a lot of national championships in our bracket. Tennessee's also in this Riverwalk region. We call the travel on the floor. seen Sam lately Marquette four for their last four they've found some creases in the Virginia Tech defense when they've taken care of the basketball but they've got 11 turnovers so far that's why they're still down but they've been able to you know pull Kitley out of the lane defensively and find some open baskets underneath Liza Carlin misses there Shepard still yet to score from the floor, but they are very happy to get the ball to Kitley and have her pass out of that double team once again. This time the, the Virginia Tech offense overloaded on one side, so when that help came, there wasn't the rotation to get on that open player, and that's why she was so wide open and Kitley delivered. What can Mark? Marquette do there because you know you bring the double team and of course one player is going to be open there's Selena Lott hitting her sixth point of the day but what can they do defensively where you're going to bring numbers well that's where they'll they'll continue it's a chess match and and, and coming out of the timeout Virginia Tech made a little adjustment so that they pull the defense 
and Marquette this time doesn't double team and Kitley just takes it at it. So, you know, Marquette's going to throw different things. Virginia Tech is going to counter. These two coaches have a lot of respect for one another. Kenny Brooks has been watching, watching Megan Duffy since she has climbed through the assistant coaching ranks. He said, I was going to hire her. I wanted to hire her at some point, but you know, she's already surpassing me as a head coach doing a terrific job. I know these coaches have a lot of respect for one another and you're going to see that chess match throughout because when there's a double team and there's an open player kitley is going to deliver the basketball like she does here the offense is all overloaded to this side but then the, the next time kitley had to had the opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one and then take it at the basket because she is so difficult difficult to contain one-on-one -on -one. Jordan King at the line misses the first. Well, King Brenda had some high expectations coming into the Big East this year. Was named the Big East preseason freshman of the year. And like you said, has, has really taken over that floor general spot. further out on Van Clunen now. I'm sure she doesn't get that easy shot off. That three is no good. Shepard saves. Yeah, you're right, Sam. She comes out and then the Marquette teammates for Van Clunen just stand. They, when you pull that big away from the basket, you've got to have movement off the basketball and there wasn't any for Marquette. Baines misses. Kitley on the follow. Elizabeth Kitley now with 13. Catches the ball on the block. We have documented all game long how she has sliced and diced whatever defense Marquette throws at her. And that time, they keep the ball away from her, but she goes and gets it herself with an offensive rebound. Matches the largest lead for the Hokies, 27-21. And an offensive foul. King had the feet set. Coming up at the half, the at and 5G. Rhea Taylor, Rebecca Lobo, Andy Landers will take it for us. We'll talk about Iowa's Caitlin Clark. Of course, our game. And the freshman phenom. We know what Paige Beckers has done at UConn. And what is she going to do in the NCAA tournament this year? And I'm sure that Rebecca and Maria will enjoy talking about the bigs in this game. The guards have been held. Lot with just two points for Marquette. Shepard with zero for Virginia Tech, but it's been the battle of the bigs so far in this round matchup. Eight seconds left. Marquette looking for a final shot down low, out of bounds. That's the second time that that pass has not been connected on. Yeah, just a bad angle. Four seconds, Amor pushing for the final shot. Georgia Amor jumps for three, yes! Count it for Georgia Amor at the buzzer. Well, it has been about the bigs, but Amor bringing an extra spark to the Hokies here to end the half. That first half in 33 first half possessions. That's something that Marquette will have to key in on and focus on if they want to come back in this one. Here's our game summary. Both teams shoot the ball pretty well, except for Marquette from beyond the arc. Even at the rebounding margin at 16, Marquette usually has a plus 8.5 rebounding margin in their games this year. Yeah, you take the leading rebounder, Cameron Taylor, off the floor after she's already gotten an early offensive rebound. It, it hurt Marquette's ability on the boards. Nice move underneath for Van Clunen, who was the leading scorer in the first half for this team, has 10 points now. And she didn't have Kitley defending her that time, realized, recognized she had the mismatch, and with her back to the basket, went to score. She wasn't able to do that over Kitley in the first half, but over a smaller defender that time, she did. Kayla King missing from long range. Another key piece to this three-point shooting threat of a team for Virginia Tech. 
Selena Lott is a player that needs to get going. There she delivers inside to Van Clunen, but I'd like to see the playmaking abilities for Selena Lott come out. Have her put the ball on the floor and create get paint touches because that leads to other opportunities for Marquette. Just two points for the leading scorer for the Golden Eagles in the first half. Went one for three from the floor. Kitley with a nice fadeaway shot. She can hurt you multiple ways. And that was single coverage. She was pushed out a little bit away from the paint, but she has the ability to turn and rise up even over a defender like Van Plunen. So move underneath, but Murata couldn't finish at the rim. Shepard is such a threat for Virginia Tech, but she is very unselfish. She is okay when the offense is going through Kitley and Kitley is able to have her way like she is. Shepard is willing to step back, but when it's time for Shepard to step in and hit those three, she will. But right now, Marquette has no answer for Kitley. She's so talented, Elizabeth Kitley. Nice drive there from Lott with the left-handed lay-in. Dump down low to Kitley who falls down and whistle blows so she will get fouled. Coming up for Eastern time. Juan Pacific over on ESPN. The NCAA Women's Championship first round continues with all of our 16 verse one matchups, North Carolina a and C and NC State will get it started, then Mercer, South Carolina, followed by High Point UConn. Cap off the night in Utah Valley and Stanford. All games, of course, available on the ESPN app. And of course, UConn, the number one seed in our region here in the Riverwalk. We've also got Baylor, the winner of this game, going to advance to play Baylor. And Tennessee is the three seed, those three. <laughs> <laughs> Those three programs have won a lot of national championships. It is not going to be easy to get to the finals on April 4th in San Antonio through the Riverwalk region. This is a gauntlet. And as we mentioned, both these teams playing right now have had the opportunity to be tested against number one seeds. Marquette did not fare so well in their conference tournament, in the Big East tournament against UConn but battled them tougher in regular season. But this Virginia Tech team, they knocked off NC State, and they had a 14-point lead that they gave up in an, another game that they played against NC State. So, you know, this is a team that represents the ACC well, Virginia Tech, and they have shown why in this game by their ability to get the ball inside to Kitley and really establish themselves. Brenna, that's going to be the third personal foul on Taylor. You look at the Riverwalk region. Again, all four regions in this tournament named after landmarks in the San Antonio region. There you see number one, UConn, going to take on High Point at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Yeah, the Jackrabbits and Syracuse, their potential second round matchup. Jackrabbits can can fire in some three-pointers. They are a fun team to watch. And then in that other part of the bracket, Iowa is playing right now against Central Michigan, but Kentucky, that's that's very intriguing to me. You've got the defense and the physical play of Kentucky and Ryan Howard and what she can do against Caitlin Clark and Iowa potentially in that second round. So there, there are some exciting games before we get to some of those. You know, UConn, Baylor, Tennessee games in this bracket. It'll be such an exciting tournament. Just so happy to have a tournament this year, as are all of these talented young women to be playing in an NCAA tournament, competing for a championship here in San Antonio. And they're all in this region together. Everybody traveling down here and having to go through their quarantine and, and now having the opportunity to just get out on the court and play. We've all waited 714 days, we've been reminded, to get to this point and just very 
grateful and excited to have NCAA championship basketball. So amazing, 714 days. It was such a long time, and it was a long time, but now we're here and getting to see some tournament basketball. Marquette down by 10. Murata stepped on the line there, out of bounds, gonna be Virginia Tech ball. Marquette needs to take better advantage of these offensive opportunities. We've had a hard time scoring against the Hokey defense and just just getting into a rhythm. This Marquette team moves the basketball extremely well and works together well, but Virginia Tech has taken them out of a rhythm so far today. Shepard able to maintain possession there. Here's Kitley off balance, no good, and Locke brings in the board. Good defense by Van Clunen, just bowing up and making Kitley go over and around her. Ball falls to Murata, but a whistle blows. It, were, it looks like it was before the shot. Again, Van Clunen takes that first attempt. We saw that mid-range game from her. But on the rebound, the hustle by Taylor, and then she was fouled there before the shot was made. Nice inbounds to Lott. Maybe that'll get Lott going for Marquette. She needs it. It was a well-executed play, easy basket. They're within single digits now. Maybe a little life for the Marquette offense. Six points for Lott now. Again, the leading score for this team, averaging about 14 and a half a game. Good ball movement for the Hokies. Underneath, nice pass to Kitley. Up and in. Brooks knows who to get the basketball to. <laughs> the drive, the dish, beautiful setup. Elizabeth Kitley, 19 points in this game. Already over her season average. Kitley with the fadeaway, still pouring it in, and then Green with a terrific pass. And to mind, the road to the Frozen Four ices up tonight at 7 Eastern with the NCAA Men's Ice Hockey Selection Special on ESPNU and the ESPN app. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. So Virginia Tech maintaining a decent lead over Marquette, but Marquette has done a much better job at not turning the ball over here so far in this second half. A wild shot that time for Cam Cameron Taylor as she tries to go over Kitley inside. Your Marquette, at this point, you've got to value possessions, taking better care of the basketball, but you have to look for high-quality shots. Kitley's shot was halfway down, comes out. Pretty remarkable. Marquette, no three-pointers, but they finally get a drive from Selena Lott. And that's what I mentioned earlier, Sam. Lott is a playmaker. She was known as a defensive stopper her first couple of years at Marquette. But she, with the ball in her hands, can make things happen. We haven't seen a lot of this. She scored on that easy inbound play earlier. I said maybe this gets them sparked a little bit. She puts the ball on the floor to create. So a little, little spark, a little momentum here for the Marquette offense. So Lott now has nine points, four for six from the floor. And a seven point difference. Lott guarding Amor. Amor into the corner, good ball movement to Kayla King for three. Finally, the three going down for Virginia Tech. They lead the ACC in three-pointers made and three-point percentage, but they had started out two for 11 in this game, getting all their points from Kitley inside, but when you start paying a lot of attention to her, it opens up the three, three ball. That one from Claire Kafe is off the mark, the sophomore from Shawnee, Kansas. A 
Moore again, so good at driving the lane and kicking it back out. Here's a three. Hands off the mark from Greg. Strong drive, a foul, and the bucket for Jordan King. There's a lot of stagnancy to the offense for Marquette in the first half. A lot of standing and, and not creating and making things happen. Now we're seeing them put the ball on the floor, a strength of theirs, and creating shots. Jordan King started every game she's played. She's got a good jumper off the dribble. She'll step into it on a rhythm shot from the perimeter. She's had a little inconsistency with her three-point shot this year, but she has that ability to drive to the rim, and, and you see it there. So the last time down, it's Selena Lott driving to the basket for the score. This time, it's Jordan King. Second personal foul on the freshman, Georgia Amor. is good so Marquette trailing by seven with 222 left to go here in the third quarter and defensively you're seeing Marquette kind of make it a little tougher for Kitley to get the ball now Van Clunen puts a, a thigh in the back side of Kitley and pushes her off the block it's called for a foul there but what you've seen what the adjustment Marquette has made here in the second half is just sagging off the perimeter shooters a little bit more, getting a hand in front of Kitley so it's not so easy to get the ball into her. So that could open up this the three-point shooting for Virginia Tech. We'll see how they respond here, if they can extend this lead. Amor to Green for three, yes. That's just exactly what they did. The, the drive... Kitley was surrounded. Kick out to Green for an in-rhythm three-pointer. Ten-point lead now for Virginia Tech again. Well, this Virginia Tech team, you mentioned earlier, did not have a good start in ACC play. You know, just a terrific conference has so many great representatives from Louisville and NC State and so many others in the in, in this NCAA championship but they ended six and one in ACC regular season play here's that drive by Amor the kick out to set up NCAA tournament where the referees can go over and use the microphone to let us know what they were reviewing so we thank of course everyone in operations at ESPN and the NCAA for getting that set up. Really cool feature for us. Yeah, no doubt. That was Maya Forsberg, and normally they would come over to the sideline and right. tell that to us in person, and we would be able to relay that, but since we are remotely calling this game, uh, not able to, so she's able to share, and it really didn't matter how much was on the shot clock. They just went ahead and fired it up right off the inbounds play. So sometimes much ado about nothing, right? Taylor rattles one home. Taylor has scored in double figures the last seven games for Marquette. And she's already in double figures in this game. Marquette really stalled when she went out with the two fouls late in the first quarter. And you can see she avoided the foul that time so she could stay on the floor. Another whistle on the floor here. Yeah, the, the, the shot clock did not start on that inbound, so they moved it down to 28. It was still on 30 when the official Tiffany Bird went over to the sideline. Text it, maintaining that double-digit lead, even though Marquette has cut it to seven or eight multiple times. Baines called the foul there in the drive from Lott. And there's an example of what Selena Lott can do. That's the kind of drive that we've seen from her throughout the season, where she'll just change speed. A little hesitation there to get past Baines. It goes up. She's a strong physical guard, so she can take that contact. 
Got to take advantage of these opportunities, though. If you're going to chip away at the lead, you got to make your free throws. You have to make the shots when you can get to the rim. One for two at the free throw line. 23 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. First round game between Virginia Tech and Marquette. Remember how Amor hit that three-pointer to end the second quarter as we went into halftime. And she do it again. Off the rim. Lot has it. She'll throw up a shot from half court. Ooh. Oh. Wow. We've had a couple oh, of close oh. ones here at the buzzer. After three, Virginia Tech 48, Marquette 39. All right, thank you guys. Yep, here at Texas State, first round opening matchup between Virginia Tech and Marquette. That's start the fourth quarter. Okies on top in this one. They have maintained just about a double-digit lead ever since the second quarter. It's the end of the half. Well, Virginia Tech continues to go to Kitley inside. She starts the fourth quarter. They got a little boost from a couple of three-pointers there in the third quarter. On the other end, Marquette, no turnovers. Take, took better care of the basketball. Well, until then, but it, it's knocked out of bounds. There's been no turnovers in the third quarter for the Golden Eagles, but still haven't hit a three-pointer. They, they got some, a little momentum on some drives to the basket, but Virginia Tech's defense, for the most part, keeping Marquette out of the paint. So how does Marquette go about chipping away at this lead? Is it continuing to drive the paint, or are you taking shots like that? Well, I think it was set up by the dribble penetration. And so dribble penetration to attack and then kick and find the open player. You've got to create some rhythm in your offense when you don't aren't manufacturing that rhythm yourself. And so the dribble penetration can set up those shots. Late on the recovery. Zana Baines makes Marquette pay for it. Yeah, nice pass to set up Baines that time. Zana Baines has 12 in this one. Averaging just 6.4 points per game this season. And Taylor oh, again. What a block by Kitley. Taylor tries to power it up the lane, but Kitley says no inside. I mean, Elizabeth Kitley has essentially just taken over this game. Yeah, it's been her game. Offensively, on a single coverage, that's one of the few misses when she's had to go one-on-one -on -one inside. But she's made the right passes. She's blocked shots on the defensive end. She has done a little bit of everything for the Hokies. Filling up the stat sheet, 21 points, five rebounds, four, and aggressively attacks the rim. Blocks shots for good measure, three already in this game, a little fadeaway jumper. She was the ACC freshman of the year last year, all ACC first team. She leads the conference in double doubles with 13, and the offense has run through her to get things started here in the NCAA championship. Cameron Taylor's shot is off the mark. We were talking about it, Brenda. How can Marquette get back in this game? Well, they've got to get defensive stops. And they Ooh. cannot allow direct line drives like that. So concerned about Kitley. Everybody was up around the three-point line and just opened up the driving lane that time. Oh, but on the other end, there. I'm sorry, Sam. And, uh, and on the other end, this Marquette team is a team that typically moves the basketball well. Multiple screening action. They do some ball screens. They they open up the court. They use the dribble drive. But they've had a hard time against the Virginia Tech defense today, finding some rhythm. In transition, Asia Shepard with the bucket. She's got only four points, but her team is on top by 15 now. It's win, you advance, lose, you go home. Seven and welcome back, Virginia Tech, the seventh seed with a strong lead over Marquette. Take a look at our Riverwalk region, and in our bracket, the number one seed is UConn. The winner of this will face off against Baylor or Jackson State. 
this is up for Van Cluden, but you know, this is a, a typical bracket, like you said, Brenda. This is not an easy bracket to run through, but let's say for conversation's sake that, that Baylor comes away with a win there. That could be an interesting matchup. Baylor still the defending national champion because we weren't able to play the NCAA tournament last year. They could have won a national championship last year, too. It's just so disappointing. We'll, we'll never know. But Baylor, of course, winning in 2019. And there's going to be some interesting matchups. If Virginia Tech holds on to win this, the, the, the likes of Elizabeth Kitley inside going against Queen Eggbo and Melissa Smith inside and then the defenders for Baylor, you think about Dee Dee Richards going to be on Asia Shepard on the perimeter and Moon Urson, a terrific defender also on the perimeter. But Kelly can't believe she picked up a foul on this one. She's already got three block shots hunting down Taylor here. Whew, that pretty clean from our angle, but we're a few miles away, so... That's going to be the third personal foul on Kitley, so... At least in the interim, she'll stay in the game. Now, we don't want to count Virginia Tech with the win. We've got yep. a lot of game here yet to play, but it would be an interesting matchup with a, a lot of similar strengths between Baylor and Virginia Tech. Full court pressure there from Marquette. It's going to stay where the hope is up. Marquette has to turn it up right now. Put some pressure on the ball. Use their defense to create some offense. This is a team, Marquette, that typically scores in transition, and they have not been able to use their defense to create offense against Virginia Tech today. The Hokies just with eight turnovers on the game and only six points off those turnovers. That's typically a key stat for Marquette. They wasn't really expecting the pass. Puts up a shot anyways. The rebound to Jordan King. Up the floor quickly. There's that transition ball you were talking about. Good defense from Kayla King on the floor, fighting for it. Now, we made a tough on Valade, who is in the game for Marquette. She was just surrounded. But an inbounds opportunity. We saw a couple, a couple of good baseline inbounds plays for Marquette earlier. Oh, and they get an illegal screen, or they would have had lot open again on a screen on the backside. She comes up a little bit hobbled on that one. First, a little shaken up, coming off that screen. Kind of a knee, knee contact there. Marquette gonna extend their defense here to try to pick up the pace in this game. A more comfortable letting the play develop in front of her. Shepard forces one underneath to Kitley and turns it over. Better defense by Marquette. They were there on the catch on the perimeter. Didn't allow a three-point shot. They had three players around Kitley inside, more active. They have to be. This is this is the time. It's now or never, but that they have to do that to have a chance. Get defensive stops and come down and get high-quality shots on this end. Cameron Taylor's shot, no good. Kitley bringing it down. Blue jerseys all over. Finally, a foul call. Remember in the first half, or we saw Marquette have some success when Van Cluden was hitting those 15 to 17 feet jumpers. She was pulling Kitley out away from the basket. Well, that time, Taylor had to try to go up and over Kitley inside. You got to try to bring Kitley out of the paint to have a chance to be able to attack inside. Amor breaks that press pretty easily. Easy lane to the basket up and lays it in. This kind of drives are available for Virginia Tech because defenses are so concerned about huddling around Elizabeth Kitley and not allowing her to get the basketball that one-on-one -on -one drives are available and Amor taking advantage. Talked about Georgia Amor being an X factor in this game and she has showed up today, 11 points. Foul on the floor going against Kayla King for Virginia Tech. If you look back. Not going to look back on the other end. We're going to look forward on this inbounds play. 
Watch again the backside screen. They're going to try to get Lot open. Better defense that time. Taylor fighting against Kitley. Can't get it to go. Ball on the floor, and Kitley ends up with it. And where are the rebounders? you got to get extra opportunities if you're the Golden Eagles. The only one that was there was Van Clune, and everybody else was already retreating from Marquette. Amor. Aaron <laughs> pass. Oh, assist from the official that time, I think. It bounced off the official yeah. on the sideline. Still inbound, so Selena Locke takes that one, says thank you. And Marquette down 13 with 4.30 left to go. Time on the side of the Hokies. They need to be patient, get touches for Kitley if they can. And if there are drives available, take them. Running some clock off here. Three left on the shot clock. Amor off the front iron, gets her own rebound and a fresh 20. So Marquette had the good favor of a bounce off the official on the other. All games also available on the ESPN app. So got High Point and UConn tonight, 8 Eastern. That Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, that is such a great rivalry over the years. Middle Tennessee has had a tremendous program for so many years, and, uh, and I think that's a great showcase. That one in and out, rebounded by Van Clunen. Kelly Harper at Tennessee. Doing a great job. Number three seed for the Lady Balls. Van Clunen tough up and in there. Van Clunen's got 12. It's not over. It's an opportunity here if Marquette can force a few turnovers, not commit a foul like that, but, you know, create some turnovers, score in transition. This is a team, Marquette, that throughout the season, they can score in bunches because they can get out and run. They've got a balanced scoring effort, but Virginia Tech has had Kitley in the paint and has made it tough to get in the paint. But Megan Duffy, with her fire on the sideline, knows this is time. This is the time. Bring the heat, defensive pressure. Try to create some opportunities off the defense. Eight more guarded closely by Locke. Ten turnovers today for Virginia Tech as opposed to the 14 for Marquette. Baines comfortable just hanging on to the ball here. Here's Kitley, another fadeaway and another basket. That is a tough, tough shot. Van Clunen was kind of feigning at her. Will the double team come or not? But she goes up tough. Taylor was right there, made that as tough as possible. Lott knocks down a long two there. Can't trade baskets now, though, if you're Marquette. You can't allow a shot on the other end and just trade baskets. You have to get stops. Kitley, all ACC first team. She's pushed out away. She uses her dribble, backs out, creates a little space. Every time she has gone one-on-one, -on -one, almost every time she has scored. And Kenny Brooks said it hasn't worked for teams when they've tried to single cover, but we've seen also what happens when you try to double cover. She's right. such a good passer. Cameron Taylor has fouled out now with 15 points. She will go to bench. Got foul trouble early, and I think that, that kind of hurt Marquette because Virginia Tech was able to take advantage when she was on the bench in the first half. Yeah, the Hokies were able to extend their lead when she was not in there to defend and was not in there to rebound. And you saw, I mean, in the short number of minutes she was on the court scoring 15 points, only two rebounds for the leading rebounder of the year, but a, a bright future ahead for Cam Cameron Taylor. Just a sophomore from Peoria, Illinois. The Hokies now in the bonus. This is a team, one of the best free throw shooting teams in the ACC. 
Seven ACC teams in the NCAA championship this year. A limited number of fans here at Strahan Arena on the campus of Texas State. Too much time. Got to have a sense of urgency if you're Marquette. Still haven't hit a three-pointer yet. I mean, they don't make a lot of three-pointers typically, just a little over four per game. But Marquette just hasn't found the rhythm from long distance. And with Kitley patrolling the paint, it's made it tough for Marquette to generate points. Asia Shepard on the line, 2.03 left to go, looking to add on to their lead and solidify a first round win here. Again, they will await the winner of Baylor and Jackson State. To your point, Brenda, 75% from the line as a team, very good, and something that could come in handy in an NCAA tournament. No doubt. Taylor Valade will head to the bench. Coming in is Claire Kafes, whose brother Cooper is a member of the NCAA tournament Loyola Chicago Ramblers playing Illinois right now. Oh, what a career he has had at Loyola. Talk about some, some great games in the NCAA tournament. Loyola yep. has been a part of those, haven't they? Lot knocks it down there. Finally, a three-pointer. Was that a three-pointer? Was she beyond was the line? Indeed. Their first. And if you can knock down a couple of three-pointers, if you're the Golden Eagles right now, you can make this thing interesting. Tough against a good, a yeah. great free-throw shooting team like Virginia Tech, though. And Baines is typically the player you want to go to the free throw line although she doesn't look like a 42 percent free throw shooter there just eight of 19 on the season she didn't look like that at all on that attempt Baines one for two down by 13. gotta go quick here for your marquette Here's a three banked in. Second three of the day for Marquette. Second to last minute or so. That one coming from Claire Kafes, the yeah, sophomore Claire, from Kansas. Yeah, Claire Kafes. I, I don't know if she meant to bank. Trying to hold on to a win. Sister Claire trying to come back and win in the first round over Virginia Tech here. Down by 10, minute and a half left to go in the game. So a couple of three pointers from Kafis and from uh -oh. the last couple of possessions. Turnover and a quick bucket there. Can't call a timeout to advance right now, but Virginia Tech calls the timeout just so they don't, they don't turn it over, but you can't advance to the front court until you're under a minute to play. So using a timeout here to- Marquette team, of course, finished second in the Big East. Lost to UConn in the Big East championship game. 73-39, and Coach Duffy said, we learned a lot from that game, how to persevere, what we need to do here in the first round game against Virginia Tech. They are pressuring hard here. Tough foul there going against Van Kluven on Shepard. So if you're Virginia Tech, who do you get the ball in the hands of but Asia Shepard? You know, the senior of this team, when Kenny Brooks came on board, she was one of the first people to catch his vision. And he said when their name was announced at the NCAA championship selection show the other night, Kenny Brooks looked into the eyes of Asia Shepard and they just smiled at one another <laughs> because it had finally happened. If they were denied the opportunity last year, but here they are. Shepard one for two at the line. Looking for some more threes, this time taken in. Van Cloonan will try from long range and count it. Had 
didn't hit a three-pointer the entire game until these last few possessions, and all of a sudden we've got a six-point ball game. Kitley holding on to the ball, waiting to get fouled, and, and my, Marquette my, wants a jump ball. They got it. Yeah, my Forsberg was calling for the jump ball, and it's possession arrow Marquette. Wow. The official under the basket had the foul. My Forsberg right there on the play called a jump ball and Marquette with an opportunity here just down six. Here we go. Six point game, 49 left to go. Van Clunen again, yes! Van Clunen makes it a three point game with 39 seconds to go over the outstretched arm of Kitley. And Kenny Brooks has to call a timeout. How about this Marquette squad? They get the three-pointer from Selena Lott. They get a bank shot three. Wow, a 14 to two run for Marquette to cut the lead to three. And now if you're Marquette, you you don't even have to foul in this situation. Right. Because you've cut right. it so close. Asia Shepard, the leading scorer for this team with seven points on the game. Kitley, bounce pass. Amor now with six. Virginia Tech has to get a shot. Need a stop here. They get it. And they don't get the offensive rebound. Or the defensive wow. rebound, excuse me, King does. And they're going to have to foul. Kayla King, the high school teammate of Elizabeth Kitley. Of course she knows. Kitley gets the ball at the end of the shot clock. She immediately goes to the rim. She's going to get there. She just out hustled her defender to go get the basketball to get this opportunity. Kayla King, a 77% free throw shooter on the year. And she'll shoot two. Kayla King and Elizabeth Kitley won two high school state championships together as teammates. And Ka Kayla King was so dialed in, she knew the shot clock was winding down. As soon as Kitley put it up, you would expect it to go in, but she went and got the critical offensive rebound for the Hokies. Watch free throws there from Kayla King in a two possession game, five point lead for the Hokies. But he's fine. So, if you're Marquette, are you going for a quick three here? Or are you trying to get it underneath? Yeah, I, I think you have to get a quick three. Watch the inbounder stepping in. They'll try for the two lot misses and a foul. Underneath the basket, and that could do it. So they get the ball a lot, the playmaker, to try to, to close it within three. That could have made things interesting, but the missed shot, and Virginia Tech going to somehow survive here with the flurry that Marquette put on him here at the end of the game. Virginia Tech being reminded that no lead is ever safe. And Marquette has to get a lot of credit for the way they battled back in this game to make it exciting. Baines makes it a seven point game. Valaday won't get a shot off in time, so it's Virginia Tech and the Hokies advancing.